Hey now, what is up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and I just want to do this. A spoiler talk for Spider-Man Homecoming, especially because I saw it so early that going to see it again, I just couldn't wait to talk about this in spoiler fashion. So let's jump right into it. The very beginning, which I guess this is all online for people to see before the movie even comes out, you get this video blog that Peter Parker is doing. He's recording all of these events of, of him being recruited by Tony Stark from Civil War. And I love that. I loved how the film starts off, a film by Peter Parker, everybody laughed at that. And you see, for just a couple minutes, uh, the, the found footage style, but from Spider-Man's point of view, from a superhero's point of view, which you never quite seen before, seeing how, I guess, they recreated those shots from Civil War and seeing Spider-Man, truly a kid, who I guess was 14 or 15 at the time, so he would be doing stuff like this. He would be reacting like this is the coolest freaking thing ever. I love Tom Holland's enthusiasm in those scenes and how he did seem so much like a high school kid. Because honestly, me at my age now, I would probably react the same to having superpowers and being able to do that. I love the fact that there is no origin, that there's no spider bite, there's no Uncle Ben death, they don't even show any flashbacks or the opening credits, they don't show any of that stuff, which I'm glad because Spider-Man's origin, even if the Amazing Spider-Man movie never happened, just the Sam Raimi trilogy dealt enough and, and handled the origin so perfectly so well that you just don't need to retread any of that. And then you tack on Amazing Spider-Man on top of that and it's like we're origined out. I liked how they reference uh, Parker talking to his friend Ned and uh, he mentions that a spider likes that's how he got his powers. He mentions that Aunt May has had too much on her and he doesn't want to put her through any more stress. Like that's the audience filling in the blanks of oh he's talking about Uncle Ben. Oh, he's talking about the spider biting. I'm like, we're smart enough by this point to know what they're doing. Michael Keaton as the vulture. I love how the film actually, when you get into the movie, starts with Michael Keaton's character, Adrian Toomes, and, and him, his company, how they're supposed to be the cleanup crew when stuff happens. But after New York, after the Avengers and the alien invasion, you see that Stark which I guess makes sense. He's a rich guy. He should help clean up some of the mess that the Avengers at least helped make or tried to prevent from making, but that was a lot of destruction. So I like that Stark, like from his perspective, he's doing the right thing by sending his own people in to clean up the place and to make sure this alien technology isn't just lying around. Uh, but Michael Keaton, the fact that that puts his guys out of work and, and not being able to do the job they're supposed to do, and the fact that he steals some of the alien technology, like, I understand where he's coming from. I understand why he feels like, oh, the rich guy who caused this mess is coming in and getting us out of jobs, so fuck that guy. I'm going to go and do my own thing and, and help take care of not only my men, but my family, my child. Like, he cares about that he seems like a guy who you get it now sure throughout the movie he does some questionable things he might even kill a person here or there but you at least understand how he started at this place how he got to this place and then over time with more power i guess he doesn't have responsibility he just gets wrapped up in it and keeps going liz allen she is essentially the love interest for Peter Parker. And I could see, I saw some people saying that they didn't think her character was developed enough or we didn't get enough about maybe her as a person to get why Peter likes her. Look, Peter is 15 years old. He's in high school. He's a sophomore. He sees a pretty senior girl. He's going to be interested in her. He's going to be attracted to her. And maybe you could question whether or not she would show any interest towards him for being so much younger. But she does say that she likes how intelligent he is. And, and I think she just admires that about him. And there's some mysteriousness to that when she does invite him to the pool and he doesn't show up. Some girls like a guy who plays hard to get or who just isn't so quick to do everything that she wanted to do. So I can see it. I can buy it. And I didn't mind them not really going all out developing 
her personality or character because she's somebody that's not going to stick around. We know that she's not going to become like the love interest because Peter ends up with either Gwen or Mary Jane. So I was okay with that. She was just sort of a placeholder for this movie and it was worth the vagueness of her character for that reveal. When Parker goes to pick her up for the homecoming dance and you see Michael Keaton open the door as her father, you're like, holy shit, because I heard a rumor that he was going to be the father of Zadaya's character. So I, I, that, this genuinely surprised me that it was actually the Liz Allen character. Wasn't expecting that. I love how that awkward scene played out of Parker just staring at him even while they're taking the picture. He just couldn't help but look at the guy. And then even the drive when, when Michael Keaton drove them to the dance and Keaton just figures it out from what his daughter is saying and from where Peter was when certain events happened, but Spider-Man showed up. He puts it together and he gets this look on his face. He's staring at him through the window and he, when, when he stops the car, lets her out, but sits there and talks to him and says, you better stop or I'm gonna kill you. Like Keaton just delivers that, that scariness, but not over the top. He's not shouting and angry. He's just, he's just telling you straightforward. This is what I'm going to do if you get in my way again. And I mentioned Zadaya. I should probably mention the fact that she's not, I guess she technically is Michelle or maybe that's just a made up name and maybe she is Mary Jane because you find out at the very end that she wants to be called MJ. And when her character, when she was first initially announced and casted as uh, potentially Mary Jane, I wasn't happy. I wasn't thrilled that they were changing the race of Mary Jane, which might sound weird because me of all people, like why would I like cling on to a character staying white from the comics? It's not so much about that. I usually don't care about certain characters, uh, their race being changed. If they're, if they're just, if their race doesn't really matter to who they are. Mary Jane though, I just think of a certain look. I think of that supermodel red hair just and Zadaya her character was very played down uh I guess you could build towards a sequel where she does get dolled up she does dye her hair red I'm gonna be a little bit more open-minded to it than when I was when I first heard about it because she delivered with the comedy she was funny she had those moments of being awkward and just she was good you could tell that she had some interest in Peter so I am more okay with it than I was before, but I'm still not thrilled over her being Mary Jane, if that's what they're going for. The character Ned, I thought was hilarious. Just some of the scenes of him and Peter and him constantly asking them questions. I mean, that's just something I would do, especially in high school, if I found out my best friend was Spider-Man. Donald Glover, I liked his scenes. I liked uh, the moment he has with Spider-Man, when Spider-Man's doing a horrible job interrogating him with the Batman voice and all. And when he, the the little Easter egg that some people might miss, but obviously we're going to catch when he says, I have a nephew in the city and I want to protect him and whatnot. You instantly go, holy crap, he's talking about Miles Morales. So that was just a cool little thing. Even if we never ever see the Miles character in this universe, at least they gave us that little bit of nugget. The Spider-Man costume, the Tony Stark given technology that's in the new Spider-Man costume. I love seeing Peter try to figure it out. I love seeing Peter just saying, what the hell? Why is there a machine gun here? Or, or a kill switch or all of this stuff that he's trying to figure it out. Him talking to the voice and them bonding over him talking to her about Liz and her giving him advice. And I liked those moments. It was played up for great humor and it just made it that much cooler to be Spider-Man and do all of those things that he could do. The end fight on the plane, I really enjoyed, especially because Spider-Man at this point was stripped down from that great suit that he had and he had the old school suit so he couldn't do as much the scene of him being buried on top of the rubble and being scared like any kid would and, and doubting himself and then just having to fight through it and having to realize hey i'm spider-man i need the confidence i need the strength and him talking himself up and coming out of it i love that that was such a great character moment 
for him. And the fact that he saves the Vulture. A lot of superhero movies, even old Spider-Man movies, they're quick to kill the villain off and that might have made sense for that story. But it was great to see that he was able to not only save the villain, but get through to him. Because the after credit scene with Michael Keaton doesn't give up Spider-Man's identity. That shows that, that at least Keaton understands this kid, respects him. And I'm not saying that he's going to turn good after that, but at least there's a mutual respect understanding there. Love that. The part where Tony Stark, who again, Robert Downey Jr., delivers on the comedy. I love how the moment where he saves him from the water, but he's not even in the suit. Something that they took from Iron Man 3, which I might not love that movie, but they at least uh, kept up certain continuity of what Stark can do, not even being in the country. In the end, when he offers Peter a spot in the Avengers, in an actual like, hey, you can be at our towers, you can be, you, you have a room, here's a brand new suit, here's all this stuff, and Peter turns it down. But Peter turns it down almost thinking that it was just a test. But the reveal that it wasn't a test, that he was actually offering him a spot. He had a press conference out there ready to announce that he was going to be with them. That, that was hilarious and totally unexpected. The fact that Stark is back with Pepper Potts and they're gonna get married that was great too because I was upset to see in Civil War that they had split apart but to see them back to see Gwyneth Paltrow back was a nice little uh, nugget there the part at the very very end when Aunt May finds out that Peter Parker is Spider-Man it's always something in the older movies that you assume that maybe Aunt May knew she might have had an idea and it's just they never talked about it. They never had to talk about it. She's just in the back of her mind knew. This is just like, no, she definitely knows. She definitely found out. And the way that she found out was so great, so comical, so funny. And then the very, very last after credit scene was so great because even in the screening I went to, everybody, almost everybody was waiting in the theater on bated breath, like what's going to be the scene? Is it going to be for Infinity War? Is it going to be for Ragnarok? Is it going to be for what? Spider-Man 2? And to see Captain America, who they had used perfectly in those like those gym videos, the school videos, Hannibal Burris was like, I'm pretty sure he's a, a war criminal now, but still, whatever, we're going to use the video anyways. And Chris Evans, just the way how he's like, yeah, so this is what happens. You have to learn uh, when, when you're patient that things might not pay off. How does it feel to sit here and wait for something and not get it? And it was hilarious. I loved everything about this movie i really did some people in the comments asked me if if this is better than the original spider-man 2 because i said in that review that that was my favorite spider-man movie ever i don't know i don't know it's one of those things where i just saw this spider-man movie so i don't want to be so quick to say oh because this just came out and i love it it's the best or it's better I've seen the other Spider-Man 2 so many times I, I've so many, for so many years. It's hard to be so quick to say it, but I will say this. If this isn't the best Spider-Man movie ever, it's pretty damn close. And who knows, over time, with more rewatch, it might end up being my favorite of all time. That's at least how close it is to being the best. So guys, let me know in the comments below. Spoiler talk now. What did you think of Spider-Man Homecoming? What were some of your favorite scenes, your favorite parts? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later! <laughs>